Patrick, in trying to understand what is the nature of our consciousness, there are generally two big positions. One is that it's only the brain, it's so-called naturalism or materialism, and some kind of other, a dualism, something special, an immortal soul, or some something of that. Uh, one of the ways that science has approached this is from an evolutionary psychology point of view to show how the mind has developed. Uh, as a neuropsychologist, uh, how does that argument work? Evolutionary psychology gives us a framework within which to ask the right question. So um, the mind presumably has functions, and the functions, according to evolutionary psychology, should serve fitness or be fitness enhancing. So those are things like mating and eating and survival and that sort of thing. So the genetic structure that you have will be perpetuated and increase within the population. Right. So the, so the default assumption with respect to the nature of the mind-brain is that it's a device to enhance fitness. And so then, then you can reverse engineer it and say, okay, how would it go about doing that given the current ecological conditions mm -hmm. uh, the organism is facing? And, well, in order to mate, it will need to the, the mind will need to pay attention to these cues and not those cues. It will have to look for fitness indicators in its mate. So men will look for uh, fertility signs in women, and women will look for other signs in men, and so forth. And the studies bear that out. So we probably would not have discovered that as easily if we didn't have evolutionary theory mm -hmm. with which to give us the framework to ask the question. Mm -hmm. So. I think that's how evolutionary psychology contributes to um, understanding the nature of mind. And, and so as we look upon different things that evolutionary psychology says about mind, we can see that different modules of the mind, like you're defining uh, how men find women attractive and what women find attractive in men, which is one small aspect of mind, right. uh, that those can be shown from an evolutionary standpoint of how those developed. Right. We, yeah, we, we, we see those behaviors manifesting. I mean, um, men tend to choose younger women with signs of fertility, you know, being, being fertile. And, and women tend to choose men with resources. And evolutionary theory predicts that. Now, there's all kinds of exceptions. There's all kinds of problems with the theory. But, you know, statistically speaking, that tends to be what people at least say they are looking for in, in a mate. Hmm. You know, and that comes straight out of uh, predictions from evolutionary psychology. Do you see the evolutionary development of religion, which you've studied, as uh, a parallel to the evolutionary development of the mind? Um, to some extent, insofar as mind is dependent on culture, for sure. Yeah. Uh, um, among the products of the mind are symbols and, and all, the, all the, the things we call culture. Ritual practices, symbols, language products, um, all of these very complex things that are really extensions of mind. And if you look at the history of religions, a lot of these things first were generated in ritual contexts. You know, so paintings or sculptures or temples, these all came out of religious contexts. So um, they're products of the mind, yes, but they're products of the mind as mediated by religious impulses. Mm -hmm. it, within specific cultures, sure, and so the expression yeah. is is, uh, is uh, has the variety of different cultures, but the fact that they occur is occurs in all cultures because obviously mind human mind is in all human beings, mm -hmm. and we find religion in all different cultural expressions of human beings. Absolutely, yeah. Um, religion, to that extent, is, a, is an expression of the mind and, and the mind's capacities. But on the other hand, the, the interesting thing is to ask the question, to what extent does religion give us access to capacities of the mind we would not otherwise have if we didn't have religion? And one of those things is we become better killers. You know, if, if religion helps us become better killers sometimes, that's what the record shows. Religion also helps us become better healers and it helps us become better cooperators. So that cultural complex we call religion is a device the mind uses to access powers of the mind we wouldn't otherwise get to. Mm. We become better killers, better healers, better cooperators, so on and so forth. So, so here's the hard question, though. 
does religion in that case access powers that the mind has, or does religion in that sense in a historical development co-create and co-develop aspects of the mind that never existed? Because this is the, um. this would be the big discussion. Mm. Does the mind always exist and therefore it may have some ontological or great being difference, like an immortal mm. soul or something always there that mm. religion recruits? Mm. Or in a, in a more robust uh, evolutionary psychology theory, it, it, you'd have the religious part actually co-creating the mind, so the mind would develop because of, of this relationship. That's the key. Yeah, that's a really good question. I, I think it's a little bit of both, probably. And probably religion and other cultural complexes start off by just accessing what's already available and modifying it, enhancing it, inhibiting it, so on. So it's like a selection device. Mm -hmm. But then as the two co-evolve, then religion starts generating platforms that then become part of the mind. And then the mind uses that to generate further cultural, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. this co-evolutionary scenario. You see it in, in, in all aspects of human behavior. Religion is just particularly good at it. So, so you would then believe that the evolutionary uh, development of the mind would have a direct relationship to the evolutionary development of religion. Um, I think the human mind co-evolved with religious uh, ideas, you might say, or religious practices. Uh, we can go back as, as far back as Neanderthals, and there are indica indications of religious practices, very clear indications of religious practices. So at the dawn of humankind, most, most anthropologists, I would say, with the dawn of humankind about 50,000 years ago. I mean, the first humans were at 300,000 years ago, but you know, something special occurred about 50,000 years ago, and, and we have clear evidence of religious artifacts, religious practices going back 50,000 years. So it must have influenced subsequent development. It must have. It's too, it, it, it influences too many of those fitness-enhancing behaviors for it not to have had some sort of effect on um, permanent human behavioral capacities. In that sense, that uh, the cultural aspect of religion co-develops with the personal psychological development of an individual mind, and the two have co-evolved together. Yeah, I, I would say so. I would say so.